Hey, what's up guys? It's your host for this next video, Captain 66, uh, representing Darth Sidious 33, the uh, Twitter account, and here on YouTube. Um, today we're going to dive right into episode 2. Um, we're going to discuss episode 2, Attack of the Clones. So I have a lot of points I want to bring out about this movie, so we're going to just dive right into it. We have the first thing I have is the fact that this movie is just is just made to be fun and to look and feel fun and and it's not scary. You don't get a scary feeling. Some Star Wars movies you get a little bit of a scary feeling when you Revenge of the Sith and The Last Jedi and uh, Force Awakens and uh, Return of the Jedi and stuff. Um, you just they, there's a little bit in there. It's a little dark and you just um, yeah. But this movie is like total feel good, funny, a little bit funny, not too funny, but um, um, like first chase through Coruscant where you have Obi-Wan jumps to the window and grabs a thing and then Anakin gets in the in the yellow speeder that kind of looks a little bit cartoony and the prequels all together have just a little bit more of a cartoon feel to them, but personally I like that because Star people say, well, it, the prequels aren't don't look as real because they look the, the CGI and and all this stuff, but um, the Star Wars is a fantasy, and so it's a fantasy world. So why not make it look fantasy? I mean, sure, you want it to be real, and uh, the originals had this real feel because the rebels had no nice ships, and they and they were like struggling to make it, and they were you know this little hole in the galaxy that's trying to bloom and stuff, and so for that part of the storyline, yeah, it works perfectly, but Coruscant's this huge, rich planet that has beautiful um, ships and, and all sorts of alien creatures that live there and stuff, so it should totally look the way it does. That brings up the next point is uh, we get to see Yoda training younglings, which is cool because we know that Obi-Wan, at some point, Yoda had trained Obi-Wan, and we met in episode one. Qui-Gon, so we found out that that was Qui-Gon was Obi-Wan's master, but we can see here that Yoda trains younglings, and he had a whole group of students that he was training, so figure Obi-Wan probably was in that group when he was that age. We learned uh, uh, Boba Fett's backstory. I've never really been a big fan of Boba Fett, but I know a lot of people are really crazy about him, and so it was kind of cool to learn that Boba Fett was originally a clone, and his dad, Jango Fett. I'm not a huge fan of, but I mean, honestly, for me personally, I think Jango's just as cool, or if not cooler than Boba Fett, because, but I'm going to save that for a different video, um, I like the fact that this movie is a love story, I mean, ultimately, that's what this movie is, and so if you're not a Star Wars fan, you could watch this movie and get a different feel than you do for different Star Wars movies, it's, in this movie, is not so much about the action, it's more about about learning who these characters are and and putting these two awkward people together who somehow fall in love they're from different worlds I mean and a lot of people think that Anakin and Padme's their relationship and their uh, romance was like really awkward and it was but put yourself in especially Anakin's shoes okay you're torn away from your mother at a young age and then you meet and you and you fall in love with a girl who's a little bit older than you, you turn, turns out she's the queen of a planet, and then after that, you're shipped away to become a Jedi, and you're tra off training for the next ten years, and you don't see her, and when you get back, you're f you haven't stopped thinking about her. Your first mission after that ten years is to take the girl that you have a crush on and take her home to her planet, and you have to spend time alone with her, with nobody else around. I mean, how are you going to act? You're going to act totally awkward. So actually, in this sense, when you think of it that way, bad acting and weirdness um, was actually right on point. Kudos to George Lucas, really. And then we get to go to Tatooine, and we get to see Luke's original home, which was, it was filmed, new props, but it was, it was filmed on the same grounds. They said the 
the hills and stuff were the same ones that we see in A New Hope, so that was actually really cool. Count Dooku, I'm not a huge fan of Count Dooku, but I mean, nonetheless, he's a cool character that I wouldn't want to take away from the universe, and considering that he's not in the first film, and in the third film he dies in the, within the first ten minutes, this is really his movie, I mean, this is really his big movie and he gets a pretty cool lightsaber duel at the end actually three different lightsaber duels we'll get to that here in a minute Padme is uh, she's pretty hot and she has some pretty good outfits in this movie but I think we're down to basically the meat of the movie which is the battle of Geonosis one of the very top best uh, battles in Star Wars history um, not lightsaber duel. Lightsaber duel is, I consider, a different category than regular battles. So, I mean, you got all these Jedi. You got Kit Fisto, and you got Plo Koon, and uh, um, so many other Jedi. Uh, Mace Windu, um, which with she has the uh, freaking purple bladed lightsaber, which this is the first time I've ever seen that, because he never used it in the first movie. Um, battle of Geonosis is, is, uh, is freaking awesome. Um, and then we have the Dooku battle, which, um, Dooku, basically Dooku versus, uh, Obi-Wan, and Obi-Wan's taken down, and then Anakin comes up, and he battles Anakin, and then we get Anakin with the two lightsabers, which is, like, really cool. I remember the first time I saw that, I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then Anakin gets taken down, and, uh, and then Yoda shows up, and it's a battle of the force between Dooku and Yoda. And then, it happens. Yoda pulls out a freaking lightsaber and battles Dooku lightsaber duel. I mean, a lot of people think Yoda CGI flipping around with a lightsaber is stupid, but it's one of the coolest things in the world to me. I mean, I'm, it still gives me chills every time I see it. And as the uh, episode one had Duel of the Fates, definitely the uh, theme music of this movie and one of the best. Um, uh, Sokka is Across the Stars. That is a beautiful tune, and it's one of my absolute favorites. And uh, I think pretty much the last thing I have to talk about on this for this movie is uh, the fact that it's the only move, Star Wars movie in history. Padme and Anakin get married at the end of the movie, and uh, it kind of just captures the whole thing of being a love story into the end um, especially there's some really good deleted scenes when um, Anakin goes back to and you meet Padme's parents and he goes back and they have dinner and, and at her how, how you know all together is this the best Star Wars movie ever no is it one of the lowers oh yeah for sure it's one of the lowers but for me it's I mean, Star Wars movies, the worst Star Wars movie is better than 90% of other movies, so, uh, um, I want you to, I want you to go back and I want you to rewatch this movie and listen to everything I said and take into consideration and thought everything that I spoke about in this short little video here, and, um, until next time, episode 3, um, thank you for listening, like and subscribe, and may the force be with you.